what is this thing that we call happiness and what brings us happiness in the short and long term. In fact, we could probably point to happiness as one of the most sought after states or commodities or emotions, whatever you want to call it. Happiness is what many people are seeking in work, in relationships, and in general. And yet most of us can't really define exactly what happiness is or means for us. We can point to certain experiences. We can try and describe our states of mind and body, but most people recognize the feeling when we have it. And we certainly recognize the feeling of not being happy, whether or not that means simply not being happy as the absence of happiness or all out depression. Let's talk about happiness, this thing that everybody seems to want, and yet not everybody can agree upon what exactly it is or how to get it. So for instance, if I tell you I'm feeling pretty happy, I know what that means for me, at least in this moment, but you don't really know whether or not it means the same thing as what pretty happy means for you. If I say I'm extremely happy and I have a big grin, I have a grin on my face that I can't seem to wipe off my face, well, then you might get a sense of how much happier I am than pretty happy, but it's still hard to calibrate my level of internal state or happiness. And the same is true for you and for everybody else. It's been discussed many, many times that the total amount of income that an individual makes or has, and again, this could be income from work or it could be money that they inherited, does not seem to directly relate to their level of happiness. The amount of happiness does not scale with that income. That is for every additional thousand dollars or $10,000 that they earn, they don't report being that much happier on a daily basis. Now, that said, I venture the argument that while money truly cannot buy happiness, it absolutely can buffer stress. And in particular, it can buffer stress in the form of the ability to purchase or pay for goods and services. Most of you have probably heard about the general conditions for obtaining happiness. And they always seem to circle back to some of the same basic features of get great sleep, have great social connection, pursue meaning, don't focus to any overextent on things like pursuing money, because there are indeed these studies that show that the amount of money that people makes does not necessarily scale directly with happiness. People's happiness does not necessarily scale with income. In fact, it tends not to past a certain level. And yet I think we'd be remiss. I think actually it would be inappropriate for me to say that the amount of income that one makes is not important because if the amount of money that you happen to have or are making does not allow you to meet your basic needs of shelter, healthcare, etc and or doesn't allow you to access the kind of social interactions that can renew and reset, or I would say directly enhance the kind of neurotransmitter systems and hormones that lead us to feel that we are happy in our life and we're having quality social connections. Money cannot buy happiness, but it certainly can buffer stress. And one of the ways that it buffers stress is by allowing options of different kinds of social interactions, options of different types of recreation that one can engage in to access new forms of social interaction and so on and so on. No one on their deathbed says they wish they had worked more. Well, indeed, the total amount of time that one spends working does not seem to determine one's happiness. There, we have to be careful with how we interpret these blanket statements that have become very popular that you know money doesn't determine happiness and that the amount that you work isn't going to determine happiness. It certainly is the case that if you earn more money from working more and that money is devoted to things that bring more opportunities for social connection or for buffering stress in other areas of your life, including healthcare, uh, care for your children, care for yourself, recreation, other things that you enjoy, well, then I think it's a little bit naive to assume that work itself is somehow counter to happiness, which of course it isn't. And it especially isn't if we combine that feature of work with another important feature of the human psyche, which is this notion of meaning, the big factors that determine happiness. It's going to be social connection, not income. It's going to be uh, the amount of time that you are able to have open thinking and creativity, which I think is an essential feature of happiness, by the way, physical health, in particular, one's ability to stay mobile 
and to be able to access the kind of daily activities that one needs to accomplish unassisted is a strong correlate of happiness and so on and so on.